Hey y'all, it's Crystal Fiber Tardy here. Gonna be starting a new vlog for the final week of Garb August. I'm having to reshoot this intro because I accidentally deleted the first one that I did. <laughs> yeah. And I like deleted and deleted it, you know. So it's gone. Anyway, so this is the final week in a few days of Garb August. I'm just kind of one I think big old vlog to the end of the month. <laughs> Um, but what is going on? So it's the anything goes week. So, you know, just read anything as long as it's just trashy. And I, I'm digging into this. John Ferris's Son of the Endless Night. I'm reading it, I'm buddy reading it with Alex over at the Boo Bangness. <laughs> and, um, and we're just really loving it. We are loving it. Ah, uh, so just really quickly. In a peaceful Vermont courtroom, humanity will be called to trial by endless evil. Ancient and implacable, armed with sensuality, delusion, and horrible death, it will join itself to human weakness in an unholy alliance. Against it stand only imperfect human beings caught in a world-spanning struggle in which they have everything to lose. For all of us and only human strength to help them. That's just a quick little blurb on the back. But look at this book. It is just, I mean, just, just a hair over 500 pages. And it's so good so far. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. So really quickly, just more than that little blurb, what it's about. We're following this couple named Rich and Karen. Like in their early 20s. And um, they are going to Vermont, like a ski area. Just for a little getaway. But really rich has like this sort of like ulterior motive because previously they were in the area and I guess befriended this young girl named Polly. I think it's like 12, 13 years old. Now he got a message from Polly on his answering machine. Remember answering machines? And uh, it was like, help me. I'm, I, they're hurting me. I'm in trouble. Come help me. Uh. And so, yeah, that's why he's there. And things go from there. Is Polly possessed by a demon? Are there sinister things at work? Someone ends up dead. Rich is now blamed for it. And our story is going from there. Yeah, it's just... Let me tell you. Let me tell you, okay? <laughs> I am so impressed with this book. It has just pulled me right on in. And yeah, I'm just... I'm so excited. Now, you know... I don't know that I'll get to much else. <laughs> Maybe some audiobooks or something. Um, I don't know. Our reading for the month, just definitely. <laughs> um, I planned on too many things, right? So I'll let you, I'll take you along for the week and see how we go and what we end up getting into and all that good stuff. And yeah, let's wrap up Garb August. All right. I'm checking in now because I did finish a book today um, and I finished Ruby by V.C. Andrews. I listened to the audiobook and um, it was okay. It was okay. Um, basically, Ruby is a 15 year old girl. She is growing up in the bayou down in Louisiana uh, with her grandma, who she calls Grand Mirror through the whole book. Um, her grandpere, her grandfather's uh, drunk. Um, <laughs> Um, and we, you know, she grows up in the bike, so of course she's really poor. Yeah, I think V.C. Andrews likes, you know, <laughs> kind of like rags to riches stories, you know. Um, through things that we learn, family secrets, she goes, after her grandmother dies, she goes and lives with her father, who was, of course, she didn't know he existed until recently. And, um... So she, but he lives in the Garden District in New Orleans, of course, because he's very wealthy. And then, yeah, family secrets, fish out of water, you know, because she's not used to this high class, upper class lifestyle. She's bullying a little bit. Possibly a twin sister involved. There's a twin sister involved. Um, th that whole thing, you know what I mean? Um, and I can see it was okay. Now this is, I know a book that is, that is one that's ghost written by Andrew Niederman. And, um, and I don't know, like, I feel like, I think it's, it, it echoed a lot of what heaven was for me. 
Um, but again, this is kind of rags for riches story, and I really liked Heaven a lot. I liked that book a lot. Uh, I liked. I really just. I mean, they could have connected with Heaven as a character. I thought she was very, you know, engaging and interesting. And Ruby, she's she's fine. You know, what I mean, she's pretty cool, but. I just didn't connect with Ruby as much as I did with Heaven. Um, um, so, yeah, I don't know. And Heaven, I'm saying Heaven. I think the, the book's name's actually Dawn, right? Is that the name of it? Anyway. Anyway, so, but, you know, I was interested enough to keep, you know, to finish the book. Anyway, it wasn't like a DNF or anything. It wasn't like god awful or anything like that. It wasn't my sweet Audrina, you know what I mean? Uh, but, um, but yeah, it, um, I just didn't quite feel that connection of, and I was buddy reading this with Kelly, who, from Kelly Hooked on Books, who, she ended up not finishing it, but we were kind of saying the same thing, I feel like it was like missing a little something, missing just a little something to kind of really pull you in, even though there was a lot going on, and again, this sort of soap opera-esque to it with family secrets and all that kind of juicy stuff that are in V.C. Andrews books. Um, it just wasn't quite there in Ruby, you know what I mean? Now, will I continue with the series? Yeah, I think so. At some point, I will definitely continue on with Ruby, um, just to kind of see what goes on. Because I'm no, it, for reading previous series, sometimes the like second and third, possibly the fourth book, can get a little like off the rails. So, <laughs> at some point, I think I'll dig back into the Landry series, and just to see what Ruby's gonna get up to, and her, you know, her twin sister and. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious enough to keep going. So, so yeah, I have finished a book already, and um, it was good. It was good. Alrighty, so now I'm, I'm officially done. So I'll check in later. Okay. <laughs>
it was more than just you know Cujo's getting rabies and killing people. It was definitely a lot. You get a lot in the backstory of the characters. This is a Castle Rock story, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's some references to um, the book just went right in my head. <laughs> ah, Dead Zone. No, not Dead Zone. Dead Zone. Not Dead Zone. Dead Zone? <laughs> it's not Dead Zone, is it? It's Dead Zone. Yes, Dead Zone. Um, you got Sheer Sh Sh Bannerman is in it. Yeah. Um, so just, you know, some little Easter eggs for that. Um, and then, yeah, we got Kucho who contracts rabies. You know, he's like a family pet for these kids. And you learn about his family. And then there's a family down the street. You learn about their family. Uh, so it goes, it goes a lot to the characters as a sort of a typical Stink King book does. And um, you kind of to know these characters and get a feeling for them and and yeah and you do get some perspective from Cujo himself and it's sad it's like really sad because he gets his rabies from this bat and you know he can't help what's going on it's really sad <laughs> it's, it is it's kind of heartbreaking <laughs> and the ending I was like WTF anyway I, I enjoyed it for I enjoyed it pretty good uh, I hadn't seen Cujo the movie in god a million years so um, and I don't, I don't really remember much about the characters of the movie. I might need to do a rewatch of Cujo at some point. It's been a long time. Uh, anyway, I had a good time with that. Um, what else? I've been trying to catch up on YouTube because I'm terribly behind from like vacation and all that. I'm just really behind. Uh, so if you see me comment on all videos, that's why. I guess maybe you said that already. I don't even know what's going on. I have no idea. Um... Yeah, so it's the weekend coming up. We got a library book sale tomorrow. I'm gonna go. I, 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 I'm just gonna go. I don't need to go, but I'm gonna. It's for the library. So I'm telling myself it's all for charity. Hurt, <laughs> hurt, not charity, but you know, raising money for the library. Anyway, I've rambled enough. It's Friday. I'm ready to quit this bitch. So let's go home. Bye. Let's go to the library book sale. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Well, I um spent a little time at the library book sale. <laughs> I really just kind of made my way through mass market paperbacks, found a lot of vintage sci-fi. Very excited that I found, really excited. Um, looked through a little bit of the other stuff, picked up a few little hardbacks, a few little, you know, sort of trade paperbacks, but mostly um, mass markets. And they've raised the price for mass markets. They used to be 50 cents, now they're a dollar each. And I'm not really sure why. But all these books are donated, you know what I mean? I don't know, I'm not really sure. Dollar's still cheap, but you know, they're old books and I don't know. Maybe I'm just being silly. But anyway, I'm excited. So now wish me luck as I'm going to Walmart. To the Walmart, as we say around these parts. Like the youngling needs back to school supplies because he starts school on Monday. And today's Saturday, by the way. <laughs> oh, I go to Walmart probably about once or twice a year. I really don't like Walmart, but it must be done. All right. Hey, let's check in a little bit, because it's been a little while. <laughs> I am making my way through Son of the Endless Night by John Ferris. I'm quite halfway, just about halfway. I'm still just really, really, really liking this a lot. It is really good. Um, so we've, we've gotten to a point, I think I mentioned this is kind of like, like a possession type story, and this man's kind of getting wrapped up in everything. He's got this man named Rich. And, um, and so now someone is his dad, and Rich um, is, as was arrested for it. Um, but, you know, is Rich possessed? Dun, dun, dun. So now we're getting like, we've met Rich's brother who's coming to town. There's, you know, lawyers and all that kind of stuff. I think we're soon probably gonna get like a trial at some point. Um, um, there, there's, um, Rich was a for Rich's brother Connor was a former priest, so he's made some connections to like a monsignor, and like because Rich has told Connor that he's possessed and didn't didn't really do this this didn't kill this person, um, and yeah you know it's you know so of course you know cops and there's lawyers and they're like he was just crazy just killed this person and but you know Rich is like 
I'm, I didn't do it. All this kind of, you know, all that kind of good stuff, you know. <laughs> and it's just, it's just so good. It's just so well written. And the characters are, are just really, <laughs> they're just really good. You know what I mean? Like I enjoy reading about them. And there are some just genuinely spooky stuff going on in here um, that involves like an old mansion and all this kind of all this kind of stuff um yeah it's just very atmospheric and with with the spooky stuff uh, yeah i don't know <laughs> it is really good you guys it is just really damn good and i'm just super excited and you know even though it's long it's like just just over 500 pages i don't feel so we're at 200, I'm at like 200 and like 19. I don't feel like this is too long by any means yet. Like, I mean, nothing like that. Like, yeah, I'm just enthralled. So <laughs> I'm just having a damn good time with this book, which is so exciting. Um, I know John Ferris is, you know, he's been around a long time and I've got several of his books on my shelf now. So I'm really excited to read those and yeah. Um, it's like a little bit on Angora Fever, though, the Edwood stories. I have read a few uh, that um, I haven't updated on. Let me get back to where I was here. Uh, there was a story called The Rue Morgue Revisited. I DNF that one. Um, it's just a short story, but I was not about to read it because it just was talking about... Um, it was like this murder, but it just kept talking about cutting like a woman's breast and nipples off and stuff. And I just, I don't know. I didn't, I just didn't want to read it. <laughs> okay. Then we had, there was Try, Try Again, which was a story written by Ann Gora from the, that was published in Suck em Up Volume 4 <laughs> from 1971. Um, what was this one about? This was about a guy. <laughs> this was about a guy who was having a hard, having a hard time. Um... <laughs> he's having some erectile dysfunction let me say that and so he's like trying to have sex with people with, with girl you know women and he's just like you know he's having some troubles right <laughs> so he tries this new girl that he's met named Jeannie and and you know she's hot and heavy and she's you know super cute and everything he's very attracted to her but wah, wah, you know <laughs> that is until She gets dressed and puts on her fuzzy pink Angora sweater. No, no, no. We finally have more mentions of Angora sweaters. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that was fun. And he, uh, this, what's this guy? What's the guy's name again? It doesn't matter. Uh, he, um, he real, Tony. Okay, Tony has realized that is the Angora that um, gives a little leg up, you know? <laughs> uh, and he, uh, he puts on the Angora sweater and it's like, bing! Yeah, kind of a silly book, but it was fun. Okay, then there was The Loser and um, what was this one about? Oh, that's right, this one. This one was kind of crazy. This one's about some lesbians. I feel like Edward likes to, to write about lesbians. It's these two women, two women that are, um, they're, they're working in like an office and they get caught having sex in the bathroom. Um, and then it just goes from there. It's kind of weird. Um, and then there was a, a story, Hooker by Choice, another one by Ann Gora. I absolutely love that pen name. And this just talks about a woman who's you know, who's a lady of the night and enjoys doing it and just makes money and that's her job, right? <laughs> so, um, no Angora sweaters in those videos. <laughs> but yeah, um, like I said, these, these latter stories definitely seem to be a bit more sex and uh, raunchy, you know, focused stories where some of the earlier stories were kind of horror-ish and stuff, even though, even that they were a a little bit of kind of sex in there, but these ones definitely seem a bit more explicit in the back part of the book. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just still, they're just silly and fun and ridiculous. So they're fun. Um, I'm trying to read a couple, at least a couple more today. I'm definitely behind. I don't know if I'm actually going to finish this by the end of August. 
I mean, I'll just save it for next car August and finish it out then. That's fine too. Anyway, still just having a lot of fun with that. Um, I think that's it. Did I talk about Cujo? I think I did. I don't even know. Let me check and see if I talked about Cujo or not. If I didn't, I'll talk. All right. <laughs> All right, I'll check in later. Bye. Closet Queen from Volume 3, Number 2, and May Old Lovers, 1971. Carter Winston hated the name Closet Queen, but that's exactly what he was. He'd always felt that the powers that be who had gone up the toilet trail before him certainly could have had more of an imagination when labeling people's actions. He knew he could have thought up a better name. Of course he tried at times, but mind weary, he'd always put it aside to another day. And when that day came, there was always a future day to advance the procedure. Closet queen, indeed. Carter Winston simply knew where the goodies could be located. Besides, he wasn't the only one who frequented the toilet areas for his dessert. He knew many others like himself, but he sure as hell hoped that the others wouldn't find out too quickly about the new source. He'd been lucky three times already that week. Even the fuzz hadn't caught into the new base of operation. Really nice, clean, clean place. A janitor came in twice a day to clean up and put the perfume disinfectant cakes in the urinals. There have been a lot of other places which he frequented over the years where the urine and fart smells almost took his mind off his business at hand. Or was it in hand? But not the men's room at the Legoran Theater. It was always spit and polished clean and perfumed. It hadn't always been that way, only for the past three weeks, since the new owners took over and apparently were doing their best to make the theater at Le Grand Place come to life. Not only, not only was the place clean and smelling delicious, but the lights were subdued. None of the ordinary glaring white globes. Purple brilliance shrouded the room in the most restful illumination any person would could want, especially a homosexual person like himself. Alrighty guys, let's do a final check-in because, well, it's September 1st. Garb August is over and I have just finished my last book. Yeah, I had to go stretch it a little bit into September, but that's okay. <laughs> so let's uh, talk about a couple, couple, a couple of the books that I just finished. Uh, one that I don't even think I mentioned I was reading was the BTS um, memoir. And um, I decided to go ahead and read it during Garb August time because I know a lot of people probably think this is just trashy. <laughs> Even though I don't, right? I think that's kind of what Garb August is about, is enjoying things that you enjoy, whether you, you know, other people think it's garbage or not, right? Mm -hmm. So this was their story, their book that they put out, when did it come out? A couple, July, I think it came out. Um, and it really is sort of a, just a document, really, of their first 10 years, because they celebrated their sort of 10-year anniversary uh, this year. So um, it goes way back to training days and then, you know, forming the group, goes through all the albums. Um, it's basically, um, put my elbow down. So it's basically, um, this guy is writing it. Who's the author of this thing? Uh, it, it doesn't. There's a main writer. I'm not, I can't even find it right here. Anyway, um, and uh, so he's kind of writing, you know, the narrow, the, the parts, but then there's, there'll be like inserts of little, like, I think with the, the members were interviewed and um, talking about these different, um, oh, here we go. Myung Sok Kang. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then, so those little sort of bits of the, their answers for the interview were, are kind of interspersed within this 
book. And um, so yeah, it was great. It's got some pictures in here, you know, which really always fun to reminisce about their like early days when they first debuted because they were so, they were just so young. You look at it now, they <laughs> just look like teeny babies, you know? Um, so it was really fun. One thing I really love about this is all throughout, um, let me find one. Of course, I can't find one when I need it. There are these QR codes every so often. And so what that takes you to is like what they're talking about during this this point. So, of course, in the early days, it takes you to like old dance rehearsing videos or their first video, their first music show performance. Uh, some of their old vlogs that they used to do or blog entries that they used to do back in the day. Uh, just stuff like that. And that stuff is really fun to just go back and look through. So I've, I've, I haven't by any means checked out all the QR codes, but I did do some of those early ones in the first you know, few chapters. And oh yeah, took you way back. But anyway, I love, you know, I enjoyed this. I, I would have liked a little more, it felt kind of, uh, little, okay. I would have liked a little more, I don't want to say like juiciness, because I mean, I'm not looking for like, you know, celebrity gossip or anything like that, but, but, um, I think overall it's definitely was sort of sugar coated in a way and not, not necessarily getting really deep down to the nitty gritty, you know, I think, I think especially in those early, early, those early years, you know, when they were you know, kind of struggling to get their, get their names out there and make their albums and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, you know, when you're a fan, this stuff is just fun. So I, I, you know, I overall enjoyed this very much. It's a really beautiful book, you know, with again, all the photographs and all, just all the stuff that's in it. Other than I actually hate this cover. I hate that it's got this, do you see how it's like not a full, that flipping annoys the, the hell out of me. It is so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, now would a, a non BTS fan get enjoyment out of this? I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, but, um, I think if it's like, if you're wanting to possibly get into BTS, heck yeah, this is a great place to start because again, it's got those QR codes that take you to all the old stuff. Uh, and you can just really go down the rabbit hole of, uh, like really, you know, get it into the, the history of the group, you know, if you wanted. Fans are gonna enjoy it no matter what, you know, you know. So, so I, I just enjoyed it. I love having a copy of it on my shelf. So yeah, I enjoyed it. But most importantly, let's talk about *Son of the Endless Night* by John Ferris. I got a weird light going on here, because holy moly, this book is flipping crazy town. It really was by the end of it all. This is 500 pages. You know, again, I was buddy reading this with Alex over at the Bucky Bus, and um. She, I, I was always behind because I never have enough physical reading as I think I'm going to have. But anyway, so um, I think, I haven't heard her final thoughts yet, but I think we kind of both of, you know, ended up really just having a good time with it. And um, um, yeah, so again, this is, you know, at the heart, it's a possession story. And it starts out, we think a young girl is possessed and then maybe somebody else gets possessed. It turns into like a courtroom drama at the, I mean, the very last bit maybe 50 -ish pages turns into this courtroom thing because this guy I said is you know this guy from this main character has is being charged with murder and so his sort of team is this you know that he's not guilty because of he's been possessed and like how are you gonna how are you gonna make that work in court anyway it was so really thrilling and and super interesting and I just think John Ferris's writing I think is excellent I think it's, it's really good overall and it just it made the characters super interesting um really you know sort of layered and, and complex um you know, so, so you know it got you invested you know uh, particularly with Rich who was you know the guy that's on on trial for murder like his brother was pretty it was a big part of the story because he's trying to help him you know get him you know off you know of murder and all that good stuff um there's a, a priest that's in here and uh, who is pretty interesting and it goes a little it goes a little off the rails at some point with uh, i can't even describe it honestly the horror in here is top notch the horror is top notch if you like absolutely just crazy 
body horror type imagery this this is the this is a book for you um it, the horror was good the horror is really good in here and um and, it, and it's you know pretty steady throughout you'll get you know a lot of these sort of sections where characters are trying to like what can they do to help help rich and all this stuff but and then like something just absolutely horrific will happen it is just, <laughs> yeah it's good stuff now it is a product of his time in some ways too this was written in 1984 so, uh, protect, you know, particularly in regards to women characters. So, when a woman, you know, we meet first would meet a woman. She was, of course, absolutely described by her looks, and uh, whether she was pretty or ugly, you know, or, <laughs> um, you know, pretty typical in that regards, I would say. Um, but I mean, it may get annoying. I'm, I ain't gonna lie, uh, but. Um, like towards the very end there's this woman who's like helping out on the case and it literally went through hell during this trial and so she's going like back home and he's you know the you know he's you know, describing what she's looking like as she's getting out of the car and there's a sentence like her eyebrows needed to be plucked like what the hell dude what the hell why would you even put that sentence in here anyway <laughs> that kind of stuff was kind of ridiculous but let me get overall <laughs> um i just had a heck of a good time with this i mean what more can you ask for really so if you like possession stories absolutely add this one to your list if you haven't read this one yet it's a classic good versus evil you know wrapped around a lot of religious you know discussion you know there like i said there's a priest mixed up in here it goes to some other places with religion you know so god and the devil and all that kind of good stuff all that's in here um if you're looking for some good body horror, absolutely. And, and I think just really overall, other than, yeah, the misogynistic parts, just really well written. Honestly, it really was good. I liked it a lot. So really awesome way for me to end Garbagas, I'll tell you that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there. That's Garbagas for me. So I think this blog didn't have so much fun footage, but you know, this is our first week back to school for my kiddo and all that stuff. So it was just a it was a work week, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, September is starting today, so I gotta switch gears. <laughs> so yeah, thanks so much for watching. And if you've watched all of my Garbagas vlogs, I appreciate it. I had a really good time with Garbagas this year. Again, thanks to Ollie and to, of course, all the amazing cast of co-hosts for this year. Boy, we stunk it up, didn't we? Yeah, we got super smelly. <laughs> and uh, I really, I hope everybody had fun. I know a lot of people joined in. And uh, yeah, thanks to Ollie again for having me uh, as a co-host. And I, I'm, I'm preparing for next year. I've already got a whole bunch of books already in line. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm excited. Um, so yeah, let me know how you ended Garbagas or, or yeah, let me know. Did you survive? Are, are you in one piece? Did you make it out in one piece? Let me know. <laughs> so I'm gonna end it here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. And yeah, till next time. Bye guys.